Dogs competed for the nation's most talented canines in Saitama Prefecture near Tokyo. The top prize went to a toy poodle from Mii Prefecture, central Japan. He balanced on a ball on his back paws and rolled the ball forward. The poodle's owner said she was worried if a dog could demonstrate all his skills. She said she is happy he won the contest. Fifteen dog and owner teams took part in the final of this year's contest in Koshigaya recently. There are qualifiers from six regions across the country. One dog danced to music, another skipped rope. Both drew cheers from spectators. A spectator said he was impressed by all the dog owners who have been working hard with their pets. Railway fans have bid a final farewell to the world's first undersea station in northern Japan. 160 passengers who had reserved seats on express trains got off at Tapi Kaitei Station on the 10th of November, the final day of its operation. The station is located 135 meters below the sea surface. It was originally intended to be an evacuation site for passengers using a tunnel that opened in 1988 to link Aomori Prefecture in the main island of Honshu with Hokkaido by train. The passengers were informed that the station would be closed because of its 80-centimeter platform would obstruct the Shinkansen bullet trains and needs to be removed. The Shinkansen services are expected to start in several years' time. The passengers also went to a shelter for a thousand people that lies parallel with the tunnel and were told how the construction workers had to struggle with spring water. A passenger from Hiroshima Prefecture said it is a pity the station will be closed. He said he took many photos and videos to show his family. Tapi Kaite and the station in Hokkaido will be officially closed next March. They are the last undersea stations in Japan. People in the ancient capital of Nara got their first glimpse of a newly renovated national treasure. Workers have been repairing the 8th century pagoda at Yakushiji Temple since last year. The temple is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Visitors are not usually allowed inside the tower, but 500 people won the lottery to enter to see the renovations. One visitor said he was impressed to see the old calligraphy on wooden poles that support the central pillar. Another visitor said he is surprised to see the pagoda in such great condition, though it was built more than 1,200 years ago. Chefs from Japan and France have displayed their culinary skills in an event in Paris to get more people to try Japanese food. Renowned French chef Alain Ducasse organized the event recently. Ducasse is known for using Japanese ingredients at his restaurants. Nine chefs created dishes for reporters and representatives from the local food industry. They used around 50 ingredients such as wagyu beef and Japanese horseradish. Their original recipes included an appetizer made with whipped lettuce and herring roe. A dessert of mixed Japanese horseradish and dairy cream was also part of the cuisine. People who tasted the dishes marveled at the exquisite combination of French and Japanese elements. In France, Japanese food is growing in popularity with many French chefs preferring to use dashi soup stock. Ducat said French chefs can learn many things from Japanese cuisine, which is known for its meticulous attention to detail. Next month, UNESCO is expecting to designate Japanese traditional cuisine and food culture as intangible cultural heritage. The International Robot Exhibition held at Tokyo's International Exhibition Center showcases robots for various uses, from industrial robots that make car parts to service robots that will be utilized in various areas of everyday life. The expo, celebrating its 20th anniversary this year, is held biannually and consists of over 300 exhibitors from Japan and overseas. This year, the theme was Making a Future with Robots. Companies participating demonstrate the continuing advancement in robot technology, attempting to show how it could play a major role in both industries and at people's homes. Japan is known for its robot technology, but what visually separates Japan from other countries' products is that the robots are designed to resemble cartoon characters, even for industrial robots. 
A robot arm, instead of keeping the design to two standard metal arms, it is white and given a face with two twinkly eyes, which are two cameras monitoring the operations. Among the Japanese exhibitors this year with super robot technology is a French company that created the humanoid robot NAO, launched nine years ago for educational purposes. The features are simple, but it has a humble sweetness that could be the next robot friend that everyone wants to have at home or in schools. The exhibitors compete with their robots at the International Robot Expo for their funniest creation to catch the attention of the buyers. Japanese robots are widely viewed as extremely intelligent and high quality, but it is commonly viewed also as more comical and witty as the design element is geared towards fun. A robot with two antenna bouncing on its head climbing up scaffolding is also on show. The company really makes advanced systems for carrying people with disabilities from their wheelchair to the bed. From large industrial robots to tiny robot toys, Japan remains the mecca of robot technology and this expo provides visitors with an experience of the new wave of robotics. Young singles in Shanghai flocked to a massive blind dating event in the hope to end their status quo on the special occasion of so-called Bachelor's Day. Although less people were seen in attendance of the event on its second day, date hunters who look pretty young are still crowded at the site. On a wall built with dating offers, daters born in 1990s can be easily found from the bulletin. Unlike the elder generation, daters at this age have some real picky rules to choose a date. Despite their upsurging enthusiasm to go to an event like this one, to pick a satisfying date from such a huge crowd seems to be a mission impossible to the young daters. Not only young people who are in great concern of their status quo, many parents are also struggling to looking for the perfect match for the children. Now, some of them have been going to blind dating events on behalf of their children for three or four years, hoping desperately to put the endless battle to an end and snap a win. Bachelor's Day is a pop culture entertaining holiday on November 11th for young Chinese to celebrate their bachelor life. The first panda born in South China's city of Guangzhou celebrated its 100th day after birth on the 7th of November at a local tourist resort. At 100 days old, the baby panda is maturing well and has been reaching developmental milestones. 40 children below 2 years of age donned panda costumes and joined a celebratory activity. The baby panda's mother, nicknamed Mei Ching, has been training the young cub to walk by itself since the first three months following its birth. General manager of the Guangzhou Qimeilong Tourist Resort, Dong Guijin, said Mei Ching left the baby panda alone over there and walked outdoors after breastfeeding it. Intentionally encouraging it to walk as the baby panda is learning to walk, his mother was trying to lure it to a sunny place with fresh air. The baby panda has grown to 4 kilograms from 130 grams when it was born on July 31st. The resort is now asking the public to help name his baby panda by selecting one of 10 Mandarin Chinese names, which include Yu Yu, Mian Mian and Ling Long. Express delivery companies across China are gearing up for the anticipated online shopping spree on November 11th, which is unofficially regarded as Singles Day. Some companies began to recruit more delivery men as early as in October for the busy period. They offered a monthly salary of 3,000 to 8,000 yuan but received few applications. Most delivery men in the country have been working seven days a week since November 5th. It is estimated that express delivery companies will move 400 million packages that day. More than 1 million delivery men working as couriers across the country are busy preparing for China's biggest online shopping day. Express delivery companies have leased more than 100 aircrafts to serve high-volume orders. The Singles Day began to celebrate by Chinese college students without romantic partners in the 1990s. The timing was based on the date, November 11. Unattached young people would treat each other to dinners or give gifts to move their special someone and end their single status. Many singles also go to parties on that day in hopes of meeting eligible dates. Now, Singles Day has mushroomed into an annual online shopping day for millions of bargain hunters.
The four-day Cha'at festival culminated with devotees offering prayers to the rising sun on the banks of rivers and other water bodies. People in large numbers congregated on the banks of rivers this morning for Argya to the rising sun, which formally culminates the Sha'at festival. Sha'at, the festival depicting simplicity and the Indian culture, concluded with special puja and offerings to the rising sun. Despite Bihar and Jakarn, thousands of devotees in the national capital performed Cha'at Puja at the bank of Holi Yamuna and ponds across the city. The four-day festival started from the 6th of November with the tradition of Nahe Ke. Next day, devotees observed a fast which ended after the sunset. On the 9th of November, the Vratins took fast without water for 36 hours. In the evening, the Vratins went to the riverbanks and ponds to make the offerings to the setting sun and prayed for the well-being, prosperity and progress of their loved ones. According to Hindu mythology, Cha'at Puja was started by Karna, who was called as Surya Putra. It is believed that the ritual of Cha'at Puja may even predate the ancient Vedas text as the Rig Veda contains hymns worshipping the sun god and describes similar rituals. All arrangements have been made to avoid any untoward incident during Chad. Politicians from various parties made a beeline for various guards along the Yamuna celebrating Chad Puja. Besides foreign tourists have also flocked to the guards to enjoy the festivity of Chad Festival. Britain's Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales and his wife Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, received a colourful welcome to the southern Indian city of Kochi on November 11th as the couple enjoyed an evening of traditional dances and martial arts during the last leg of their trip to the subcontinent. The royal couple visited Kerala Folklore Theatre, which houses the country's largest collection of traditional performing art costumes. The royals were handed flower garlands before being shown classical Kathak dance moves. Charles and Camilla witnessed the traditional Kathakali dance in which artists with brightly coloured faces and dazzling costumes performed an excerpt of a 300-year-old Hindu legend. The dance depicted the mythological story of a demonic spirit who tried to trick a heavenly prince into marrying her. As the cultural evening drew closer to its end, the couple also had the chance to see a demonstration of Indian martial arts known as Kalari Payatu. This is their third official visit to India. The trip is aimed at strengthening bilateral ties between London and New Delhi.